The wild hunt are something in the books that are only mentioned a couple of times, but we also knew that our audience was going to expect them to show up, because some people have played The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Um, so they are something that we started planting in season one. Another name for them, it's the Wraiths of Moorhog. And we say in the very, the very first episode, the pilot episode. I saw the Wraiths of Moorhog over the channel this morning. Yes, you mentioned him. Hey? No good will come of it. They're an omen of war. They are skeletal riders on skeletal horses. And they ride sort of distantly in the sky and people see them usually in the summer over the Skellige Islands. They are a portent of doom. doom. Nivellin says in season two. And that's really all we know about them. In fact, they kind of feel like folklore when they're first uh, mentioned in the books. And we wanted that same feeling. In fact, Geralt even says, It's all horseshit. And of course, we want to turn that on its head. I saw them myself just last week, riding their skeletal horses across the southern sky. We really relied on the word specter, which is absolutely what Sapkowski calls them all the way through. And that's so important because, again, they're presented just as this concept. They're, you know, they're an omen, a bad omen. Um, and then there's a moment in The Time of Contempt where uh, one of the characters says, but there's, that horse was real. We had some clues from the books, actually in a book that we haven't adapted yet, um, but we brought them up into this season so that we could start to really build out this mythology. By the time we get to know them a little bit better, we wanted them to be as scary as possible. You are Alice. Siri. Andrew Laws, who's our production designer, also does all of our creature concept. And he began um, drawings for all of the Wild Hunt. That was another important thing to us, is that they not be seven identical riders. Um, then in fact, we understand that um, the king of the Wild Hunt, who we learn is Aradin, um, has a slightly different look. In fact, they all have slightly different looks. Going to that idea, of course, that they all have different backstories. They're all individual characters. So we will actually start to delve into them as real characters, and they will get the same backstories as all of the rest of our characters do. Why we thought that this season was right for the Wild Hunt is that we're starting to delve into Ciri's powers a little bit more. In fact, that's uh, Geralt's main thrust in this season, is not just does he want to protect Ciri and train her, but he needs to understand what he's protecting her from, what he's training her for. And part of that investigation for him is into her powers. Um, what are they? What do they access? Um, and sort of what are the ripples that they're going to cause through the continent? Child of the Elder Blood, starry-eyed daughter of chaos, join our hunt. We realize in season two that they are connected to Ciri somehow. We don't know how, but she seems to have a special relationship to them. Actually, it's Blood Origin, which is our prequel spin-off, that will start to lay the track a little bit more of what that relationship is, and then it will completely explode for you in season three. 